Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we will focus on the f function of this. We have seen in the last presentation that there is a Mangler function which is also called as the f function. Let's see that function elaborately in today's presentation. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to outcome number one understand the single round of this algorithm. Outcome number two, we will know how confusion and diffusion are added in the DES algorithm. And outcome number three, we will understand about the substitution box and the permutation box. Before stepping into the Mangler function or the F function, let's revisit the DES encryption algorithm and also we will see about the single round of DES algorithm quickly. We know this is the DES encryption algorithm where it is going to take a 64-bit plain text and it's going to convert it into 64-bit ciphertext. And this 64-bit plain text is given to the initial permutation and the output of this initial permutation function is going to be 64 bits and these 64 bits are going to be sent to round 1, round 2, up to round 16 and for each round we are going to take a 48-bit round key where this 48-bit round key is generated from the 56-bit key length. After round 16 processes the data, it gives a 64-bit output and this output is then fed to a 32-bit swap function. So the left hand side 32 bits and the right hand side 32 bits are swapped and the 64 bits that we get from the 32 bit swap function is then given to the inverse initial permutation function and the output of this function is the 64 bit ciphertext. Now what happens in every round? The 64 bits which is sent, there is a left hand side part and there is the right hand side part and please focus on this now. The right hand side part is of 32 bits, it is first expanded and the 32 bits are expanded to 48 bits and the round key is received from the key scheduling algorithm and the output of the expansion permutation and the round key is XOR and the result will be 48 bits and these 48 bits are then given to the S box which is the substitution function and the result of this is going to be the reduction in the number of bits. So 48 bits are reduced to 32 bits and these 32 bits are then given to the P box which is the permutation box or the transposition box where only the position of the bits are changed. So this is what exactly happens in this Mangler function which is also called as the F function. And please note this Mangler function is operating on the right hand side 32 bits. What are all the operations that is being carried out here? The expansion permutation, the XR operation, the S box and the P box. I repeat but with a different diagram. So what are all the operations that are being carried out? The operations are being carried out on the right hand side 32 bits. So the right hand side 32 bits, the expansion function, the XR operation, the S box and the P box. So this is what actually happening in the Mangler function. So let's first focus on the expansion permutation. What is this expansion permutation? It's clear that the 32 bits that is fed into the expansion permutation function is converted into 48 bits. So the input to this expansion table is 32 bits and the output from this expansion table is of 48 bits. How these 32 bits are converted into 48 bits? Actually they are expanded. Let's assume these are the 32 bits that we have. These 32 bits are these 32 bits, the right hand side 32 bits. So what happens? These 32 bits have to be expanded, right? So just see the color combination that I have used. So these bits are placed here. So 4, 18, 12, 16, 20, 24 and 28 are placed here and the remaining 32 is placed here. So this is originally 32 bits, then we added 8 bits to it. So it becomes 40 bits for now, right? Still we need another 8 more bits. So what I am doing? I am just taking these 7 bits and placing it here and I am taking this bit and placing it here. So we have added one more 8 bits. So obviously 32 bits plus 8 plus 8, so we get 48 bits now. So this expansion permutation is actually performed by the expansion permutation function. So it takes 32 bit input and converts this into 48 bits. This is how the expansion takes place. So we are done with this part. It's clear that 48 bits is the output of this expansion function. Then what happens? The simple XR operation with the round key, isn't it? So this operation is quite straightforward. 48 bit output from the expansion table is XOR with the 48 bit round key and obviously we'll be getting 48 bits. That is what we have seen in this diagram. 
the 32 bit input from the right hand side portion is given to the expansion permutation function it converts this 32 into 48 then it is added with the round key now we get another 48 bits these 48 bits is now given to the s box isn't it so after xr these 48 bits are given to the s box just see how many s boxes are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 s boxes are there so what is the input to this entire s box it's a 48 bit input isn't it how many s boxes 8 s boxes so 48 divided by 8 6 so every s box is going to take 6 bits 1 2 3 4 5 6 and it converts the 6 bits into 4 bits 1 2 3 4 so the 48 bit output of the XR operation is given as an input to the 8 X boxes and these 8 X boxes takes 6 bits each, a total of 48 bits. So these 48 bits are then converted into 32 bits. So the output of every X box is going to be 4 bits. So 4 into 8 S boxes, so we get 32 bits. How it is actually happening? Let's take there are 48 bits now after performing the XR operation. Now these 48 bits will be obviously having the first 6 bits, right? So let's focus on the first 6 bits of the 48 bits. Let's assume the first 6 bits are 101010. Now these 6 bits are converted into 0110. See how many bits are given to Sbox 1? The first 6 bits of the 48 bits. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now what's the output? 1, 2, 3, 4. Likewise the next 6 bits are given to S2. The next 6 bits are given to S3. It continues and the last 6 bits are given to S8. So every S box is going to convert the 6 bit input into a 4 bit output. How it is actually happening? Let's see that now elaborately. So this is what an example S box 1. So this is the substitution box 1. If you see here, this is from 0 to 15 and this is from 0 to 3 and I have represented the numbers in binaries. So this is the binary representation of 0, this is the binary representation of 1, 2, 3, up to 15. This is the binary representation of 0, this is for 1 and this is for 3. Now let's see the previous diagram. What is the input given to Sbox 1? 101010. And what's the output? 0, 0, 1, 0. So let's see how it actually works. So the input is given to Sbox 1 is 101010. And what is the output we got? It's 6. In decimal 6 means in binary 0, 0, 1, 0. So these 6 bits, there is a row and a column information hidden. The first bit and the sixth bit represents the row. So in this example, we have taken 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So this is the first bit and this is the sixth bit. So 1, 0 is representing the row value, which is this. And what are all the other bits? 0, 1, 0, 1. So 0, 1, 0, 1 represents the column. This is 0, 1, 0, 1. So 0, 1, 0, 1 and 1, 0 is intersecting at the position 6 and that's why we are getting 6 as the result and the binary representation for the number 6 is 0, 0, 1, 0. So 6 bits are converted into 4 bits. That's what I told you. 6 bits are converted into 4 bits. Likewise, we have 8 S boxes and these 8 S boxes are going to convert 48 bits into 32 bits. So the output of this S box is going to be 32 bits. So we are done with dealing the S boxes as well. Now let's focus on the last part, the permutation, which is the transposition box or the P box or the permutation box. So what happens here? The input to this P box is going to be 32 bits and the output is also going to be 32 bits. So what is actually happening here is the 32 bits position are changed. Let's say the P box is receiving the bits from 1 to 32. Now the first bit is placed here, the second bit is placed here. The third and fourth bits are placed here and this is how the permutation works. So the shuffling is done so that the input 32 bits are retained as 32 bits only but only the order of the 32 bits are changed. So we are done with the Mangler function. So in this Mangler function is actually doing expansion, then an XOR operation, then S box and then the P box. Now all these stuff are happening where? Now all these things are happening in this function. So this function is the Mangler function or the F function. So this Mangler function, it does both substitution and transposition, right? Transposition is here and substitution is here. When transposition and substitution are there, obviously it is adding both confusion and diffusion. This is how the confusion and diffusion properties are added to the DES algorithm. 
And that's it guys. I hope now you understood the single round of this algorithm. We know how the confusion and diffusion properties are added in the DES algorithm and we also have seen about the S box and the P box. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.